Hi, I'm Ben from The Things Industries. And today, I'm gonna to show you how to add your first LoRaWAN device in The Things stack. If necessary, I'll also show you how to add a gateway to create your own LoRaWAN coverage. I'll demonstrate today using an NGINKO LW22 smart plug and The Things indoor gateway. But first, in case you're wondering, what's LoRaWAN? LoRaWAN is a low power wireless technology for Internet of Things devices. LoRaWAN is so low power that battery powered devices can last up to 10 years. LoRaWAN gateways and devices are pretty inexpensive and they can transmit over a huge range, up to 15 kilometers in urban areas. The trade-off for this incredible power efficiency and long range is that LoRaWAN devices can only transmit very small bits of data. But this is perfect for things like temperature sensors, soil moisture sensors, power meters, etc. So now I'm gonna show you how to add your first LoRaWAN device and gateway and start getting data from your LoRaWAN sensor. Let's get started. All right, so we start in the console of the thing stack and the first thing we need to do is create an application to group our end devices. So let's go to applications, create application, and then we give it an ID. The application ID is necessary, the application name and description are just for your information. Then we go to register end device. We've just rolled out a new feature, allowing you to scan a QR code to prov provision your device automatically. The feature is still in rollout though, and we're working with manufacturers to actually create these QR codes for all the devices, so most devices don't have them yet. So for now, we're just going to choose the device from the lower end device repository. So let's enter the device. In my case, it's an NGINKO LW22. And then all of the lower end information that for that device is pre-populated, and we see a picture of it here. So I choose a frequency plan, which matches my area, SF9 for Europe. And then the keys should be provided by the manufacturer. So I enter the join EUI, dev EUI, and app key provided by the manufacturer. And then the ID is automatically generated from the device EUI. But I can change this if I want. So I'll just add, add a little reminder to myself here about what this device is. Now I hit register end device. And then I can go ahead and plug the device in or power it on. And now if we already have coverage in our the thing stack tenant, we'll see a join request and then we'll start seeing data coming from the device. We can go over to the live data tab here and we can see exactly what that information is that's coming from the device. So because we added the device from the device repository, it automatically comes with what's called a payload formatter, which means that the binary data coming from the device gets decoded. And so we can see in human readable form what that information is. Here we can see a different message, which includes a date and the information about the power meter. And here's another message with active energy and apparent energy readings. So that's pretty much all it takes to add a device, in this case, the NGINGO power meter. But just in case you don't have LoRaWAN coverage already, I'll now walk you through adding a gateway. If you're using the Things that Cloud, you automatically get access to all of the public gateways on the Things network using Packet Broker. And you can also configure your instance so that you share coverage from your gateways back to the public network. But look up Packet Broker if you want more information about that. For now, I'll show you how to add your own gateway to your the Things that Cloud instance to create your own coverage. And I'll show that using a the Things indoor gateway. So back here in the console, we now need to go to gateways. Hit register gateway. And then we need the EUI and information from our gateway. With the Things Indoor Gateway, you can either read that off of the label on the back, or you can connect to the access point and read all the information from the web configuration console. So I'm going to plug in the gateway, and then I'm going to hold the Setup button. And then once the light is blinking orange, this, hope you can see that, then we can go and we can connect to the access point from the gateway. And the, the Wi-Fi password for the device is actually the same as the claim code and it's written on the back of the, the indoor gateway label. Now we go to the IP address and here we can see all the information about are the things indoor gateway. So down here I have the gateway EUI and here I have the Wi-Fi AP password which is actually the claim code which we'll also need. So now I'm going to con connect back to the internet so that I can finish registering and now in the console I add the EUI and then the claim authentication code is that Wi-Fi password. Again, you can add a custom ID if you want, but I'll just leave the one that's created based on the EUI. And for the frequency plan, that should match our devices, SF9. Now the thing stack is ready to receive data from our gateway. The only thing we need to do is reset the gateway and connect it to the internet. So I'm gonna use a pen to hold down the reset button on the gateway. And if you hold that down for about 10 seconds, then the light blinks. 
that's there, the reset button. And then I hold the setup button again for five seconds to expose the, the Wi-Fi access point. Now the light's blinking orange. And I jump back into this configuration, connect to the access point. That's at 192.168.4.1. And then I need to point it to my Wi-Fi so that the gateway has internet access. So choose your network, enter your password, and then all you need to do is save and reboot. The gateway will reboot. We connect back to our actual Wi-Fi. Go back into the console, we can refresh this page. As soon as the gateway comes online, we'll start seeing uplinks and gateway status information. That might take a couple minutes here. Let's wait. And we get a received gateway status with the version information and other stuff from our TTIG. And now we've got LoRaWAN coverage. So now if I didn't have it before, I can plug in my device and it will start uplinking to my gateway. And there I see data traveling. So that was how to add your first device and gateway to the Things stack. We're excited to see what you create using LoRaWAN. If you want to know more about LoRaWAN, head over to the Things Network Learn section. And there's instructions for everything regarding the Things stack at thethingsindustries.com slash docs. Thanks for watching.